Hi folks, I'm Jonathan Phoenix, the Carolina Storyteller, also author of Through the Flames and Redcoats, available now on Amazon.com. Through the Flames tells the story of the Lake County Fire Department as they face off against a serial arsonist bent on revenge for the death of his father. It has intrigue and all the things you love about a mystery, along with the experience of being a firefighter and what it means to be part of a team. Redcoats, on the other hand, follows a group of teens who accidentally wake up a bunch of spirits from the Revolutionary War, spirits of British soldiers taken out in a most unsoldierly fashion. And of course, chaos ensues. You can pick up both of these titles on Amazon.com. And as always, enjoy the show. Let me tell you a story is a product of Carolina Storyteller, starring Jonathan Phoenix, written, produced, and directed by Jonathan Phoenix, edited and recorded by Jonathan Phoenix, and horribly marketed by Jonathan Phoenix. Man, I gotta hire a staff. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Carolina Storyteller and subscribe to get exclusive content and all kinds of other neat stuff. We even have merchandise coming. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the show. Just north of the city of Charleston, in the woods of Berkeley County, out past Mebkin Abbey, is the abandoned town of Childsbury, the town in South Carolina that never happened. The old ferry dock still sits there, the ferry being a way to get to and from Charleston back in the day. And there also still sits in the area a small, weathered plaster building with a wood shingle roof that has sat since the mid-1800s. This building, though completely unremarkable to look at at first, is Strawberry Chapel. And with it comes a legend that most would find hard to believe. The story of the little chicken girl. Catherine Chicken was born to the famous Colonel George Chicken. And she was a happy little girl. Her father died and her mother remarried, and even with the tragic loss of her father, Catherine still found happiness. As a precocious girl growing up in the South, she was surrounded by family and friends. But when she became close to school age, her mother and stepfather decided to send her down to Childsbury to study at the school next to Strawberry Chapel. Now, she was a rambunctious child. And while she was there, on one day, she just particularly vexed the schoolmaster. Apparently, she had gone to play outside without permission. So angry he was that he decided to tie her to a tombstone in the graveyard of Strawberry Chapel. He thought that this punishment would fix her of her wandering ways and keep her from behaving in such a manner. The problem is, is that he forgot that he had tied Catherine to the tombstone, and she stayed there all day and into the night, all by herself, in the woods, alone, seven-year-old Catherine Chicken sat tied to a tombstone. With night in the woods and swamps of South Carolina comes all manner of creatures and critters. And Catherine was forced to face them alone, still tied to the tombstone. 
She struggled against her bonds, but to no avail. She was too weak from hunger and too tired for going without sleep. She stayed there late until the night, until a chance encounter with her savior occurred. It was a young man, a slave from a, another plantation by the name of Money, had made his way out towards Childsbury and was crossing through the chapel yard when he saw what he thought was a ghost. Being grown in the South, he had a trick for dealing with spooks and specters, something you may be familiar with. It was a gourd, but he had hollowed it out and carved a face into it, and he would put a candle inside and light it so it would produce a ghastly image and scare off everything around. So he quickly pulled the gourd from his belt, put in a candle and lit it, and held it up towards the ghostly apparition that he saw. But what happened was he heard a scream. When young Catherine Chicken saw the glowing face, it frightened her. She screamed and fainted. But that scream was what alerted Monty that there was a young girl there. He hadn't realized it before. And so he ran and found her tied to this tombstone. And of course unconscious because she had just fainted. He stayed with her for hours, not sure what to do. If he went and reported the incident, he would get in trouble. He was out without permission. But he couldn't leave this young girl here to die. Eventually, it had taken too long. No one had come for her. So he left and went back to his master, braving the wrath of a slave owner to save the young chick girl. When they arrived, the scene they found was horrible. Catherine was no longer bound to the tombstone. She lay crumpled on the ground in front of it. The schoolmaster, the one who had tied her there in the first place, however, he stood, eyes stock open, a look of horror on his face, and through his throat, impaling him all the way down and into the ground was one of the bars from the wrought iron fence some 20 meters away and it smoked as if it had been thrown by some kind of fire to this day people claim that they see and hear mysterious things out in the cemetery of strawberry chapel at night and it is believed that the ghost of young Catherine haunts the graveyard as well as the wicked schoolmaster. That was the story I was first told when I was in seventh grade, a tale of a young girl who was punished severely for a small offense and the schoolmaster who suffered for it. Now, as always, the truth wasn't nearly as fantastic. Believe it or not, money did stay with Catherine until the morning when the schoolmaster returned, at which point his actions were discovered, and he was quite literally drummed out of town. And by drummed out of town, I mean that the drummer boys from the army literally played the drums as they marched him out of town at gunpoint. His career as a schoolmaster was over. Catherine, however, suffered a stroke out there apparently, even as a young child. Her face never smiled again throughout her entire life, and she lived to be some 80 odd years old. But even still, after her death, reports of 
childish laughter, ghostly apparitions, and something dark and evil came from the chapel, which is still used at times for services today. During the day, it is a beautiful place, resting on the Cooper River, some 30 miles north of Charleston. But at night, it has an eerie, dark feeling. And it's a place I do not visit in the dark. Well, folks, that's this week's story. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. I certainly hope you weren't uh, too scared. I figured that after mentioning Strawberry Chapel so many times in the past, I had to tell you why. And that's why. This place, uh, I've visited it a few times, and it's just not really someplace uh, I'm ever going to go at night. Just trust me on that one. Anyway... If you like the show, remember to like and subscribe. The best way you can help me out is to leave a nice five-star rating. I would really appreciate that. If you get a chance, go over to Amazon, check out my books, Through the Flames and Redcoats. And we'll see you next week.